Good morning. Welcome to a subarctic beekeeper. My name is El Hay. Temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. As normal this time of year. I lost a very dear friend to an avalanche a couple weeks ago. And this weekend is the funeral. I dread funerals. I'd rather remember the people as they were when they were alive. So today I'm going to follow an old, old tradition and tell my bees all about it. Legend or stories have it that one of the old customs is to make sure that if the beekeeper died that you told the bees. And I kind of want to tell them about her. If nothing else, it gets me to talk about it. And they always remind me that life can go on and things ebb and flow and we have to ride the waves. If you're a beekeeper, you've undoubtedly seen the death of a colony and death of bees. It's going to be pretty, pretty, um, I want to say heartbreaking. I don't know if it's that bad. Although I do know some beekeepers who've lost their colonies or their apiaries and they've been pretty heartbroken. We put a lot of emotional and um, mental investment into our bees. Beekeepers are people that pay attention to details. We have to figure out what's going on and why. We've got to monitor what's going on week to week, sometimes day to day. We've got to watch in front of their hives and look at their behavior and find out what they're communicating to us. And pay attention to our weather the changes and see if they've got what they need in terms of pollen and nectar flow. So I've coined the term bee grief to try to explain the feelings that happen after a colony or an apiary is lost. A few years back I lost two of my colonies to a mosquito sprayer. It was July and I had put two colonies over at a friend's just to see what would happen there. And high season, bees are active, colonies are populated, everything's going great. And I got a text from a mosquito sprayer. And these are pesticide companies that spray for mosquitoes around here, but we have giant mosquitoes. I saw one the other day, but they don't carry any disease. They don't carry dengue. They don't carry malaria. They don't carry Zika. And so the mosquito spraying that goes around here is luxury only. We're used to fending off giant mosquitoes. It's part of what you get when you come to Alaska. Anyway, I had signed up to get text reminders from this company because I didn't really know what to expect. They had said that their pesticides were safe for honeybees. Foolish me. Insecticide means to kill insects. And honeybees are very responsive to what's happening around them. Got a text this morning telling me that a neighbor across the street from my friends was going to be sprayed and to throw a wet sheet over my hives to protect them in the middle of the day. And I asked, why would I put a wet sheet over my hives in the middle of the day? My bees are out foraging. And why would you be spraying in the middle of the day? I don't remember what answer they gave me. I came out the next morning after they sprayed. And in front of my hives saw a giant pile of what I thought was dead leaves, which was strange because it was July. And we don't really have dead leaves around that time of year. So as I approached my hives and I saw that pile... I was curious, and I got up to them, and I realized that they were my bees. My bees were out in front of the colonies and all dead, with their tongues hanging out, contorted positions, and I was stunned. And when I opened up the hives and looked inside, I saw some survivors that were walking around as if they were intoxicated. They were bumping their heads into the walls and falling off the bottom board into the grass, and there was some dead in the hive with their tongues hanging out. 
And the tongue hanging out thing is one of the signs of poisoning. Very long story short, I called the pesticide company and asked them to stop spraying, and they said no. And they had uploaded a video to YouTube to tell how safe their spray was for honeybees. And I got the material safety data sheet for the chemicals that we're using, and right on page two at the top of the page, it says lethal to honeybees. So I took samples, but it turns out it was too late because a lot of those pesticides, mosquito sprays particularly, disappear after three hours in direct sunlight. I took samples and sent them in along with some comb and some honey and some bee bread and pollen so the labs could tell me what they found and they couldn't find anything. And it was because of that three-hour window. That year and the following year, on our forums, a bunch of beekeepers join these forums and we exchange information and help each other out. In 2019, we lost over 30 apiaries in our area to mosquito sprays. It was devastating. We would have healthy colonies, find out that there was a spray, and the next day their colonies would be dead or just about all dead. And as we shared our stories, we realized it was happening to a lot of us. So... I got a petition going, did a GoFundMe to raise money to send other people's samples to labs if they're getting them within the three-hour window, and spoke to our borough assembly. We don't have counties up here, we have boroughs, and our boroughs bigger than the state of Pennsylvania, and then wrote some letters to the editor to our local paper and spoke to the EPA and the DEC, who weren't very interested and looked at the state regulations for pesticide sprayers and realized that the company was in violation of a lot of them. So I went and took it to the legislature. Alaska is a small town, and so we see our senators and reps in the grocery store. We live near them. We go to the same restaurants they do, etc. We have ready access to them, which is really wonderful. So the um, people in the legislature were very interested and got information, and we proposed some things to put in place to help out. We also did a public education campaign. <laughs> the mosquito sprayers had to put signs out in front of houses where they sprayed, say the name of their company. So a very generous beekeeper supporter donated some money and had lawn signs made up, big lawn signs. And I had made stickers that say, mosquito sprays kill honeybees, mosquito sprays kill butterflies, and so on, hoping to get the word out and with the cartoon-like drawing attract people's attention. Well, he took those stickers and made them into yard signs. And we got them out all over from north of Fairbanks to the Denali Borough to... Delta Junction, North Pole, all areas in between. And word got out. And it turns out the mosquito company was misleading their people by telling them all that it was safe for honeybees. But I think we we're pretty effective in getting the word out. And I've noticed a great reduction in spraying. Some other people weighed in after they got news that the honeybees were being killed because they were seeing deaths in songbirds. They were seeing dead songbirds in their yards, they were noticing an absence of any insects, including dragonflies, butterflies, honeybees, etc., which is very unusual for up here. They were noticing a big reduction in the songbirds in their area. And we had some people from University of Alaska, Fairbanks, got word, and they had been tracking that the mosquito sprays were harming the migratory birds that come up here, and also weakening the eggs so that when the eggs hatched, if they did hatch, the babies were sick and quickly died. And some farm people weighed in and realized this was the same stuff that was killing some of their chickens in their yard. And some other community members weighed in that their pets had been sprayed, that sprays had been done, and the spray had drifted into their house with their open windows and such. So we're going to continue that public awareness campaign and continue to do what we can to halt the mosquito spraying. Anyway, hope you have a good day.